we were all encouraged to eat out to help out, but now, following the surge in coronavirus cases, young people are being accused of socialising too much, resulting mm. in the introduction of new social distancing restrictions. So you have to pick and choose which grandparent you now want to see mm. if, uh, if there are five of you in the family. Uh, the newest statistics show cases in England for all ages from five to 39 have risen, but the highest rise is in those aged between 20 and 29, up to 41 cases per 100,000 people. Mm. So, is it right to blame young people? Joining us now is Professor Simon Clark from Reading University, who says no, it isn't fair to blame them at all. Broadcaster Nina Miskoff, who says the young lack any sense of responsibility, and it's time they took some. And Larissa Kennedy, the trustee of the British Youth Council and president of the National Union of Students, who says young people are just doing what, they're, what they've been told and they're allowed to do. Um, uh, Professor, let's come to you first. I mean, you know, it, it is a fact, isn't it? For the last few weeks, we've been saying to people, uh, in, you know, go, eat out to help out. Obviously, young people are going to do that. That's what young people do. They do go out. They have, don't have the responsibilities that some of the elder uh, people in, in our society do. So can we blame them for going out, spending their money or having a few drinks in the pub or being in the park or whatever it is they've been doing? Can we actually sit down and say, well, well, we told you to do that, but now it's your fault that we've got high rates? Well, no, I don't think we can do that at all. It's quite right to say that uh, younger people are overrepresented in the uh, new cases, the new diagnoses of infection. But that doesn't mean that that's as a result of rule breaking or bad behaviour. They've just been, or the, I would argue the majority of them have just been uh, taking part in society as they're perfectly allowed to. I mean, it's not against the rules to go to the pub. It's not against the rules to go to the restaurant with friends or meet in a park. So they've just been taking advantage of what they're allowed to do. So I don't really see what the problem is. Nina, would you like to tell us what the problem is and why you do blame young people? Well, the problem is, and it doesn't need a, a piece in The Times today to tell us, that young people can't keep their hands off each other. We all remember being young. So it's longer ago for some of us than others. But, you know, there are hormones. Um, there are, um, you know, when you were young, the world is there for you to take. Are you suggesting uh, that you see, it's young people kissing each other and being intimate no. that is the problem? No, 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 no. I'm saying that... that Socially distancing. Young people don't seem to understand anything about social distancing. One of the charming things about the young generation is that they're very touchy-feely. Um, they hug each other a lot. You know, so th this has all come to had to come to a screaming halt. And the problem is that you you know socially distant. Well, first of all, the government's the problem. And the mixed messaging. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody understands what's going on. Uh, the, 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 the facts have not been laid down when they, when they should have been. But young people are not being responsible because they are not suffering from uh, the virus in the way that older people do. They think, well, I'm not going to die. It's a, it's a, it's a boomer remover. Tough luck on them. I'll just carry on as normal. Well, Larissa but, Kennedy, you're the president of the National Union of Students and, of course, universities get back up and running now. There are going to be... Uh, zillions of young people uh, unable to keep their hands off each other on university campuses uh, in the next few days. As a result, Nina's saying, you have this situation where older people are affected. It's one thing that younger people are not going to be as seriously affected by the virus, but we've already seen this change in the rules, which, as Grant Shapps says, means that two grandparents can't spend time with a family and the blame is being laid squarely at the group which is shown in the stats as being affected or has the virus, testing positive for the virus, the young. I think it's really interesting that we're using this strange anecdotal evidence about young people um, supposedly touching too much or, or whatever argument that was uh, to try and put the blame at young people's door, when in fact... Uh, you cannot put young people all in one pot. I'm hearing from a lot of immunocompromised and disabled young people and students who are equally worried about this virus. And to be honest, I wonder 
uh, which young people the government is trying to blame? Is it uh, the young people who just qualified early from their nursing degrees to help uh, in the uh, save lives in the NHS? Is it the young people working in supermarkets to literally keep us accessing food uh, and other resources? Or is it the young people who've been setting up mutual aid communities to make sure that everyone um, is able to stay safe? Uh, so it really does raise some questions about how uh, this government is trying to put all young people in one pot uh, rather than taking blame for their own policies which have caused this spike. Mm. Uh, Nina, that's a, that's a good point, isn't it? That, you know, there is this... Uh, lots of blame has been thrown at the government, quite rightly so. They've made some awful decisions during this process. And the worry always was that the tactic of a government would be to get the bl people to blame people. And that's what we, we seem to be doing now. We're forgetting that, actually, those people that are ultimately responsible for this are our politicians, are our government, is our Prime Minister. What? But here we are blaming what? young people. I, well, actually, I said at the start that I, I, I blame the government, but when it comes down to it, I'm not blaming individuals. I'm saying statistically, you, you, you know, it's all very well. It, it, of course, there are wonderful young people. Of course, there are people who are who are nurses who are who are helping keeping this country going. Of course, young people. You know, you can't say all young people are 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 are, are, are dreadful. I'm saying we, we are talking in general terms, and the statistics do not lie. Mm. And the problem is when you're young you feel that you are invincible and you you know th this generation has has had not had that many challenges my mother's generation went through the war um so this is the first challenge and it's surely a time to step up you know learn a bit of patience a bit of resilience a bit of you know self discipline fortitude um and 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 get through it it's 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 it's, it's a, a great opportunity to step up and to understand that we're all part of a larger society. And while you may be OK, and, and, and the thing is, you don't know you're going to be OK because we have no, no idea what the long-term effects of COVID. You may have no symptoms or very few symptoms. But, I mean, just as decades ago, people who breathed in asbestos had no idea that decades later they would die from asbestosis. We don't know what, what the effect is on the virus on young people now, even though they may not be suffering in the way. Then there's long COVID. Yeah. So, you know, we don't know what, the, what, 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 what there is. So Profe young okay. people just take a step yes. back. OK, Professor Clark, the, I mean, Nina is very specific about young people's behaviour. Um, you don't think that they're the ones to blame. The statistics show... Uh, that infections have surged from 9 to 28 cases per 100,000 in those aged 20 to 29 in England. And the case rate has also quadrupled amongst teenagers, those aged 10 to 19. And this was over July and August before even the schools had reopened uh, from four cases per 100,000 people to just over 16. They are the ones getting the infection. Older people are the ones concerned about the infection. But other than blaming them, what could they be doing? I mean, especially considering we're now jamming them into classrooms and sending them back to university. Well, you used the word blame. You used it a couple of times. I don't blame people for picking up an infectious disease just through living their life. I mean, in, in most cases, it won't be a disease, but an infection, just through living their lives. I think that's a ridiculous notion. This is, this is incoherent anecdotal stuff. We can come up with, with uh, anecdotes for people of all sorts of ages, breaking rules and, and, uh, and uh, not observing the, the rules and regulations that are in place. Um, most of them, the vast majority of them, won't pick up the infection. But, I mean, to, to, to blame people is, is stupid. There is, no, there is no statistical, and that word was used repeatedly again, uh, evidence that younger people are misbehaving en masse. Um, is, this is just the sort of... Uh, something we've had all throughout this, this puritanical race to, to come up with ever more severe restrictions on people's lives and to, uh, to pin blame reason. on people. They're there for a reason. Yeah, they're Simon. there for a reason. They're there for a reason, absolutely. But you've got no evidence that younger there people on that you'll come. Simon, no, you'll come me. up. You are, will come you're up a, with, I understand you're you a scientist. Come up. Uh, Simon, are you, you're a scientist, are you? Science, science, scientists deal in facts, you know, and the statistics are there. And you, you never have. About, you talk about 
people living their lives. When you talk, you know, we are having to live very modified lives. And I'm afraid younger people are going to have to modify their behavior and the way the older generation and people are sensible people have actually modified their behavior. So that the statistics are way down in people who have modified. I don't like having to modify my, my I'm, I'm not, before the, the lockdown, I was not sitting here with an elasticated waist, but, you know, watching the telly, waiting, for, waiting to drop off the perch. I had a life. I love people. I love restaurants. I like cinema. I like buzzy times. I miss all that. I miss all that. I miss it. But, but I know students are having a terrible time. We're all having a terrible time. We've all had to adapt. Simon? And, it's, and yeah, it's, I don't um, see why they can't adapt too. If I may, young people have been asking the government for clarity as to whether they should modify their lives. And yet we've been told to eat out. We've been told to go back to school, back to college, back to university. And so we are following the guidelines that have been given to us by our government. If those are not good enough, that blame lays squarely at the government's door. So I don't think we can make that direct comparison because young people have, in fact, been encouraged to go back out into society, encouraged to mix amongst others. And that is why we're seeing what we're seeing. Yes, but yeah. with social distancing. OK, but all right, Nina, I, I just distancing. want to let, let Professor Simon Clark. Yeah, uh, well, can, as you can say, I just, just, just point out to, to you, Susanna, yeah. that, that before this, your gallery told me not to talk over people. They're not, not keeping other people's mics off and preventing them from doing it. Um, the idea yeah, there, there is an, there's, a, there's definitely should... an issue when, as, you, as you're probably experienced right now, when people talk over each other and then we can't hear uh, one voice. But, the yeah, idea go that ahead. younger you people have the mic. Should, should lock themselves away so that Nina's generation, or indeed my generation, can, can live life as it was before is just nonsense. They are living a restricted life everybody is mm. and and to parrot on about statistics the can on about statistics is just nonsense i'm not even sure nina knows what statistics are ah how very rude of you how very rude of you and might i say <laughs> but it's not rude to talk over might people I say, might i say just because you have the title of professor in front of your name i respect that but i don't respect these opinions we are you're being so utterly rude i i just there's absolutely no need for that there's no need for that at all there's no need to talk over people either. OK. Larissa, I'm going to just ask, what is Freshers' Week going to be like, bearing in mind both Professor Clark and Nina's opinions? I mean, of course, uh, this year is going to look like no other um, for students starting university, but also students coming back to university. Uh, and I've just been so impressed by the ways that students' unions are looking at, um, you know, innovating to make sure that remote and digital events are available and that that's accessible to all. And I think if we could see the government investing in remote learning too, uh, then that, that would help the process uh, and help hopefully ease some of the the, um, the the fears that we've heard on the show too. Well, it's good to talk to all of you, uh, although you may disagree. Uh, Simon, <laughs> Nina, Larissa, thanks very much indeed. Mm. This well, is the issue, isn't it? If you don't get proper leadership, then people do start to mm. feel uh, mm. antagonistic towards each other. Mm. It must be your fault. No, it's your people fault. People are turning, turning on each other, and it's a, that's, that's the scary thing of all of this, you know. Mm.